go. Howdy folks, welcome to the channel. This is Eggnog, and we're back with another dogfight diagnostic. As promised, this time we will not be flying a uh, Hawker Hurricane. Instead, we're in a uh, Mark 9 Spitfire. Uh, I've taken the Clipped Wings mod just for that added uh, maneuverability. Um, you lose a little bit of uh, lift, uh, but, uh, but I tend to prefer that maneuverability um, over the lift uh, just in general. Uh, weather today is uh, obviously very clear, barely a cloud in the sky. Uh, for that reason, I will be avoiding the front line, um, also because I'm uh, by myself once again, no wingmen. Uh, later on, there will be some folks from 332 hopping into comms with me, uh, but because I join later, uh, I don't actually join up with them uh, in time for the dogfight that we are going to diagnose um, today. So I'll, uh, I'll make sure that the uh, volume's turned pretty low there so that the chatter doesn't uh, kind of clutter things up here. I am in the Finnish multiplayer server. Uh, I pretty much just always fly in the Finnish multiplayer server. I would uh, hazard to guess that most, if not all, of the dogfight diagnostics will take place on the, the Finnish multiplayer server. Um, since I'm avoiding the front, I am going to a, a friendly um, depot and going to provide some, some friendly cover. I, uh, I noticed that there's um, some callouts for attackers over one in particular, so I pretty much uh, head that way uh, very quickly. So I'm in the area now, and I'm just watching. I know there's bad guys in the area because of the uh, radar callouts. I've got the depot uh, sitting right, uh, kind of at the root of my right wing. I'll circle it here. So I'm in the area, and I'm just watching for trouble. And sure enough, I look down there, and I've got tracers uh, firing up uh, to the left there of, of the depot. So I know it's under attack. I identify that there's uh, two of them down there, two, two ground attackers, but as I'm looking at them, I see, and uh, I just kind of missed it there, I see a, a high cover fighter uh, right underneath me, and I think, well, there's a perfect opportunity. So I slot in right behind him, and I take some shots at him. I wanted to make a comment here. The the reason I didn't dive right after the attackers right away is actually because I was concerned about there being uh, a fighter like this uh, up up closer to where I was. A lot of times, um, when there's a ground attack going on, especially if there's more than one of them and they're they're working together, kind of thing, uh, there'll be a, a fighter along to to give them cover. Uh, so before attacking guys on the ground, you always want to uh, scan the area for uh, fighters that might be watching out for them. Uh, otherwise, you could get down there with the ground attackers uh, only to find a, a, a fighter on your six very, very shortly. Um, so, so in this case, he was the right guy to engage. I got right after him and peppered him up pretty good. Right, who's leading this now, I've overshot a little bit, so I'm trying to use my energy and my altitude to make sure I stay uh, out from in front of his nose. You can see he he really turned towards me there uh, to try and get behind me, but he was just a bit too slow and a bit too um, low, uh, so I was able to, to hold out uh, in front of him. Now rather than turn and try and get back behind him, I opt to, to extend. Reason for that is I didn't want him to drag me down to where uh, the two guys that he was covering uh, could, uh, could contribute to the fight. If I'm going to fight a fighter, uh, I'm going to make sure as, as best I can that it's no better, uh, or I guess for me, no worse than a, than a 1v1. I figure that's my best shot. So I, so I extend, um, and, and I'm kind of watching to see if he'll chase. Sort of lost eyes on him, but I figure he'll probably show up behind me. And, and sure enough, I've spotted him. I'm going to try to pause this on, uh, on a moment where he shows up. Uh, but I've got eyes on him, and, and he is he is following behind me here. Right, there he is. Here, I'll circle uh, where I've spotted him against the tree line there. So he's coming from my about 4, four o'clock or so. And um, 
low and pretty far behind me. It doesn't mean he's not a threat, but it does mean I've still got some advantages here. So as long as I've got the advantage, I'm going to be patient. There's no reason for me to rush things and throw away all of my advantage, especially when we're um, so far over uh, friendly lines. So I'm just keeping an eye on him, kind of holding him at my four, forcing him to try and burn all his uh, energy climbing up to me. You see now he's uh, he's down here underneath me. There's no chance he's going to catch me at this at this point. So I'm going to let him pass underneath me, and then I'm going to loop around over and, and behind him. But what you're going to see is with this constant pressure that I'm applying, I'm going to be very patient. I'm not going to do any sudden moves. I'm going to keep my my stick inputs very smooth so that I don't burn any more energy than I have to. So I'm just trying to keep an eye on him as I dive down, keep an eye on my six. You're never, uh, never out of risk of someone showing up on your six. Slaw down here and he goes evasive right away and I just let him go. At this point I've got a lot of speed and I need to keep it. Now he's kind of clever here, honestly. He's, he's watching me. He's right down here. Well, as soon as he saw that I broke off the fight, he turned he turned back and uh, makes a, a pretty valiant effort, actually, to, to get back on my six. Um, but because I made such smooth inputs and didn't burn any of my energy off, he's not able to get the, the um, closure he needs to actually put any of these bullets on target. So he's just kind of spraying and praying right now, um, and I just sort of jink out of the way and and he's not able to reach me. Right there, he breaks off. The moment he breaks off me, I turn back around and, and head towards him again. So again, it's a lot of patience, uh, but very persistent patience uh, with just constant pressure. And I've put him back in front of me. He's really trying to get away. There he goes, evasive again. I'm pulling a little harder here, but that's because I can see he's pulling pretty hard as well. And he cuts around. You can see his idea there was to almost try and pull me into a scissor, uh, but, he, but he flops a bit. And every time he flops like that, he's going to be losing a lot, of, a lot of energy. So in this moment, I figure, all right, time to pull back up, and we'll, we'll give it another try. Uh, I'm really just going to be very, very patient, trying my best to stay behind his, his wing line. And make sure he doesn't have any opportunity to get behind me. He's going to try again, but again, by the time he comes around that circle, I'm so far and so high that he just does not have any any real hope of, of hitting me. So now I'm just watching for him to break off again, and then I'll initiate yet another attack. Now with every one of these attacks, I'm forcing him into evasive maneuvers that cost him energy, and so the, the fight is getting lower and lower, closer and closer to the deck, which means he's kind of running out of options. You can only dive away so many times, right? So there he's broken off, so I'm going to dip it back and initiate another attack. Just over and over and over, keeping my advantage, forcing him to do things that bleed his, his energy. Um, sooner or later, he's going to run out of options. He's not going to have the energy to do um, real significant evasive maneuvers. Dropping down on him again. He pulls pretty hard, but then he comes back, and he's trying to he's trying to get me to follow and bleed energy. But again, I'm just going to be patient. Just going to watch him go through, right here. Again, he's just doing this weaving back and forth, back and forth. And every time, I kind of nose up, loop over, and come back down on him. So I'm going to do that again. He tries to get his nose on me, but he's bled too much of his own energy. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye on his condition. There, he's kind of stalled at the top of his turn there, trying to get guns on me. And now I am really in a good spot. Saddled up behind him. He has very little energy left at this point. 
So now I'm ready to commit. Now he's low, he's slow. I'm ready to commit. He comes right in front of me. Crunch. He just ran out of energy to, to perform the evasive maneuvers that, that he needed to uh, because I just was uh, persistent and applied that constant but patient pressure uh, until I shot him down. So that's the end of the fight right there. Um, yes, it, it was quite a bit of patience. Um, but honestly, not that long of a fight. Right, I guess I it was my, my, my third pass uh, can, uh, to take him down. Um, but if I bulldogged him a little bit more and uh, bled all my energy trying to get to him, he, he might have beat me. Uh, he wasn't a bad pilot. Uh, he had some, some very good evasive maneuvers. Um, but I just didn't let him have any, didn't leave him any room uh, to, to get the upper hand on me. Um, and that's how I ultimately shot him down. So that wraps up this dogfight diagnostic in the Mark 9 Spitfire. Kind of a 1v1 deal, uh, but especially in a, in a 1v1 with a fighter. Um, patience and pressure. That's what you gotta, that's what you gotta keep in mind. If, especially if you've got the advantages, don't be, in a, don't be in a hurry. You wanna hang on to those advantages as long as you can and, uh, and, and use them to force your opponent to, uh, to kind of bleed all his energy off and, and uh, throw away any chance he might have. So just patience and pressure. Hope that was helpful, hope it was informative. Uh, maybe you can use this against uh, some, some enemies of your own. Uh, but that's going to do it for, for this one. So until next time, uh, that'll be it. Nice.